As you think about your time, where we are coming out of this pandemic, the debt that we've had to take on in the industry to weather the storm, how is this financial pandemic setting you up relatively to when you started back in 04? Oh, gosh, it's, it's so much worse. Uh, I mean, th this is the worst calamity uh, for the uh, airline industry since its existence, basically. And, um, you know, 2004 was a tough time period. You had rising energy prices. It was the aftermath of 9-11, of but nothing compared, you know, to uh, last year. It, when I look back at April of 2020, our business was down 98%. Uh, you know, so we've never seen anything like that. We've seen a nice rebound here uh, this spring and uh, beginning with spring break. Of course, that's a, uh, a combination of rolling out the vaccinations, seeing the case counts uh, come down, and uh, there's a lot of pent up, uh, you know, travel demand uh, that exists, uh, thankfully. So now we're at the point where uh, we're trying to get flights back in the air, get everything adequately staffed. So it's, uh, it's been a real wild pendulum swing the other way. I'll take it, you know, so I, th I think we'll make money here in June. And so that's a, uh, a very nice uh, uh, turnabout uh, from a year ago. How did this wrestle with the pandemic dictate the timing of your retirement as CEO, Gary, I know very much you're going to still be there in terms of chairman, but did you feel that we've now got to a stage where you can hand it over and the, the pendulum has swung to the other direction that now we're seeing so much demand supply can't keep up? That's it precisely. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll be 67 next year. It'll be my 18th year as CEO. Uh, that's a good long run. We've accomplished a lot. Uh, but our next generation of leaders, they're ready. Uh, they're ready to take on uh, the uh, CEO responsibilities. We selected Bob Jordan, who's a 33-year veteran, and very, very well prepared uh, for the job. Our board is fully aligned with our succession plan. And, um, you know, I'm healthy, and, and I feel like I'm young, and, and I have years' worth of work, I feel like, on the board. And I'll still have a few duties uh, for the company going forward. But, uh, yeah, it's... I wouldn't want to make a change uh, if the company was uh, really unstable, but we've stabilized. We'll continue to stabilize for the rest of this year. We'll have a good uh, uh, wind at our back, so to speak, uh, uh, going into 2022. And this will give our leadership team uh, the planning season this year to put a great uh, plan into place for 2022, mm -hmm. knowing that we'll have a, a new CEO. So. Uh, I think the, uh, the stars are aligned and the time is perfect. Those 2022 plans were coming off of a weekend when American had to cancel a lot of flights because they're having a hard time bringing their labor force back to work. We're hearing Delta say that they're rapidly trying to hire a thousand pilots to meet demand. Where are you positioned amongst those competitors to meet demand, particularly with your labor force as well? Well, it's a large company at this point. I think when I started 35 years ago, we maybe had 5,000 employees. And at the peak, um, coming into the pandemic, we had 60,000. So we're about 55,000, 56,000 employees right now. So it's a big company. If we want to grow from here, uh, obviously we'll be hiring thousands of people. So all I can tell you is that we'll get started and try to do our hiring uh, but we'll have to be conservative with our schedule to make sure that we don't overcommit next year. Uh, so we'll just have to strike the, the right balance here. So we'll be bringing in more new airplanes from Boeing. Mm. Uh, if we can't get the staffing to increase our flight activity, we'll simply retire older aircraft. So we'll be able to manage our, our fleet flexibly enough, uh, but I think it'll be a little tricky to get the staffing perfect. Right now, uh, our staffing is a little tight, but we're in good shape. Gary, but I think the point is, if we want to grow from here, uh, I think it remains to be seen how successful we'll be uh, hiring. But we're a good company. We've never had a furlough. We've never had a pay cut. We've never had a layoff on our history. Mm -hmm. So it's a place that, that people want to come and be a part of. And I think that that will certainly help us uh, when we're out there competing for hiring. 
Gary, I want to go to a relatively sensitive subject here because you talk about the three top-notch leaders that you have and you've spoken about how the board's really on board in terms of the succession planning. Can you give us a steer as to how you've thought about diversity within that succession planning? Because from the outside of looking in, you've got three men, white guys, leading at the moment, but have you, did you think about bringing a woman on board? I know that Tammy was potentially in the, in the running to be taking over as CEO. What, how did you think about that to ensure that you're setting the company up to really speak to the values of your consumers as well? Well, if you look at our leadership group at large, we have a, a number of women in our senior leadership uh, positions. We have uh, racial diversity in our senior leadership uh, positions. Uh, we, could, we can always do better in terms of diversity, and that is absolutely a goal. But when it comes to senior leadership, and especially the CEO, you know, that's one of the prime duties that I have uh, as the current CEO, is I want to make sure that we offer to the board, who makes this selection, we offer to the board an array of candidates internally. So the board didn't consider ever going outside the company because the candidates that we have who are ready for CEO responsibilities are right here within the company. They know the company, they know the culture, they know the industry. Um, all the statistics will show that the odds of success with a new CEO are far greater if you have an internal hire. So we're, uh, we did not consider bringing in someone new. So you, any company at, at a point in time they have to they have to play with the players that they have mm. so diversity needs to start long before making that decision here in 2021 but uh, we 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 have long valued diversity we do have a diverse company uh, we've got a diverse board and uh, we absolutely need to get more candidates in the future that are women are racially diverse, uh, but uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the record that we have, and certainly in Bob Jordan, uh, we have a real all-star who is going to uh, lead the company to even greater heights as we go forward. So is that bench where you want it to be now in terms of after Bob? the right you feel internally you've got the right number of people of color of w women of diversity in all its natures whether it be on religion and whether it be those with disabilities do you think that your bench is full enough as it stands gary oh no i think we've got opportunities there and um, i think what we're going to need to do in the future is to be more intentional uh, we're going to be we're, we're going to need to be more intentional in recruiting and onboarding in the right places to make sure that we're getting more diversity. And uh, you know, I, I I would I would say that, that that's the case for the Fortune 500. Um, but we we've got one program in particular as an example that I'm very proud of, and it's where we do go out and we specifically source diverse candidates. We put them through a leadership training program. It's called the Emerging Leader De Development Program. And then we place them around the country in various positions. And we're, we're having great success with that. So that's just an example of the kinds of things that we're going to need to do to create that pipeline of candidates that are diverse, whether it's gender diversity or racial diversity. Mr. Uh, so I think we have opportunities to improve that, and we're committed to do that. We only have about a, a minute left. As you're thinking about it, successors, future opportunities, what are the priorities going to be in maybe repaying down some of the debt that we've seen, looking at other international expansion opportunities? Where do you see the next key priority? You know, one of the things that we've done so, uh, so far is that we've been, we've been able to diversify our route map by adding 17 new destinations. So we, we, we've been able to do that by taking aircraft away from existing destinations. So we'll want to restore the flight activity uh, in those places as we, as we look forward. We'll definitely want to return to profitability, generate cash flow, pay down debt, and at the same time get the right balance of also uh, preserving capital so that we can acquire more aircraft to either renew our fleet and retire older airplanes or grow the fleet uh, and 
uh, add more flight activity. So uh, we'll add some international destinations as time goes by, but uh, for the most part, we'd like to invest more in the existing network, add more flights, add more depth. Um, all of that's predicated on continuing mm -hmm. to see a return of travelers and especially uh, the business traveler yeah. uh, over the next several years.